Hi, I'm Roseanne Israel, speech language pathologist and owner of fun to talk and recently practicing teletherapist. Today I want to show you how easy it is to make your own virtual lift the flap interactive books using PowerPoint. I'm using Dear Zoo by Rod Campbell as my inspiration piece and I'm using royalty free graphics. I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's get started. This is my own version of Dear Zoo and I am using royalty free clip art from a website called mycutegraphics.com. So this is the website, My Cute Graphics, and the owner of it is Laura Strickland. So this is my version of Dear Zoo. I'm going to delete My Cute Graphics because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to show you just the first two slides that I have done so to get an idea of what it looks like. If we go from the beginning. And that is as far as I've gone. So now we are going to start adding to the slideshow. I've included a few um, text boxes here, which I just did in advance. So it wouldn't take too long when I'm doing the demo. And I have saved the pictures on my device and I can do another tutorial at another time to show you how I did that. So I am going to pick an elephant here because he's very heavy. So over top of that, I am going to add a cage or a box. I go to insert picture from this device and I'm going to pick this box over here. Just a plain box like that and I'm going to make it a bit smaller so that there's space for my text as well. And he is very heavy so I'm going to add that. This is something I did before and because it's because I did it before I started videoing it's at the back so I need to format it. I'm going to click on shape format. I want to bring it to the front. I click bring forward, bring to the front and now it'll be there ready for me to stamp on my box and I would also like to insert a picture of from the zoo just like I have on the other ones so these are also labels that I made in advance and we'll put that over here okay now when I animate it I want it to all act as one picture even though it's three different elements so I'm going to hold the shift button down I'm going to click on all three of those pictures I'm going to right click and I'm going to say that I want to group it that way when I move it, it'll all move as one unit. I'm going to move these over just a little bit so that there's more space for my text. And I'll move the elephant over a little bit as well. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to put it on my elephant page. And then I'm going to go back to my previous page where it says he was too hungry. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it on my elephant page as well. But instead of being too hungry, I think we're going to say he was too big. So I sent him back. Now we're going to add the animation. So there are going to be two animations. The first animation shows the box or the cage leaving. And the second animation has the words flying in. So we're going to add two animations over here. First, we're doing what's called an exit animation, which is the box leaving. And then we'll do an entrance animation for the words to fly in. So I'm going to click on the box that I want to hide, that I want to add that animation to. And then I'm going to go to animations. And over here are all the animations we can pick from. The green ones are entrance animations. And the red ones are exit animations and there are more exit effects we can look at over here. So I'm going to pick something that's a little bit more exciting. I think I will pick a spiral out. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to look at is the animation pane, which is brought up by clicking on animation pane at the top there. And that shows us the identity of each picture or text box in on the slide. This picture here, this group picture of three things, 
its identity as group 11. So we need to tell the system when the animation is going to be triggered. So now that we know that this is group 11, we're going to identify the, clip, the trigger as when the reader clicks on group 11. I also want to add a sound effect to this animation. So I'm going to double click on the animation pane. That brings up this window, which shows me that the animation effect is a spiral out. Right now there's no sound. So I'm going to add a sound effect and I think I am going to add uh, maybe a laser and make it just a little bit louder. Okay, so that is our first animation done and I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So there's the box, we click on it and it disappears. But these words, he was too big, I sent him back. I don't want those to show up until the box disappears. So I'm going to add a second animation and that's going to be an appearance animation, which are the green ones. So we go back to animation box. And I want something a little bit more exciting than just the basic ones. So I'm going to go to more entrance effects. I'm going to scroll down to exciting ones. And maybe we will have it bounce in. That's kind of nice. Okay. Now we need a trigger for that. I don't want to have to click twice when I'm reading this book. I want to click on the crate and the crate disappears. And then it was too big. I sent him back bounces in. So it's going to be the same trigger. When we click on that first group, which was group 11, they will both be activated. However, I don't want that one to be activated at the same time. I want it to come in a little bit afterwards. So I've got to tweak that. Again, I'm going to go into animation pane. I'm going to double click on that orange bar. It shows me that there's a bounce. I don't want a sound effect for this one. I'm going to tweak it under timing. I'm going to tell it that it's not going to be another click. I'm not going to click again on that crate. I'm going to click after, so it's going to be activated after the previous click has happened. So after I click on the crate, then he was too big. I sent him back, he's going to come in. But I don't want it to come in at the same time. I want there to be a slight, slight delay. So I'm increasing the delay from zero to 1.5. And it's going to take two seconds for, for it to float in. So let's see how that looks now. If we go into the slideshow and we do it from the current. Okay, so my words have disappeared. I should be able to just click once on the crate and two actions will happen. Action one and action two. Perfect. And now I'm ready to go on to the next page. So for the next page, I'm going to pick a different animal. I'm going to pick a penguin. Make him a bit smaller. And now I'm going to insert a crate over top of him. And there's this nice one here because it's fragile, which I think is kind of great that the penguin's fragile. Okay. And I'm going to insert a from the zoo picture as well. So we'll go back to pictures. And I've got another from the zoo picture here. I'll put it over there. And I want them to act as a group, those two pictures. So I'm going to click on the one, shift, click on the other, right click, go to group, and say that I want to group them so that they act as one unit. Now I'm going to add in my text. So I'll go back over here. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. So now I want to add an animation to this box and it's going to be an exit animation. So I click on it. I go to animations. I'm going to go to more exit effects and I will pick boomerang. Okay. So now that I've added that, I see that it is group eight. So this crate is group number eight. So I'm going to add group eight as my trigger. So that means when I click on the crate, it's the crate that will disappear. I'm going to double click on it so I can add a sound effect. Right now there's no sound. We will add applause again and just make sure it's a little bit louder than the default. Okay. Now I need to add my second animation. 
this is going to be an entrance animation. And I can see by looking at my animation pane that this is text box 10, but I want the trigger to be the crate. So when I pick trigger, it's going to be group eight. So let's find an entrance effect that I like. Again, I want something a little bit more exciting. What is flip? Mm, I think that's a little bit too long winded. I don't like that. Maybe we'll just do a plain one. We'll just do a zoom. Okay, and the trigger, as mentioned before, is going to be on click of group eight. And now I want to tweak it a little bit because I want to be able to change the timing. Again, it's going to be, actually, let me show you what happens if I don't do this. So if I don't do that second part, that's what happens. Let me show you what happens. So we're going to go to slide show from current. If I don't do it, then I click on it. It disappears and the words never come back. That is because when we set it up, we had it set that he was too big. I sent him back would only be activated on the click of group eight. But because group eight has disappeared, I can't click on it. And right now it's set that it would actually be a second click required on that crate eight in order to activate the entrance of my text box. So that is why that second part is so important. If I double click on this, I can now change the timing and specify that it's not on the click of that of it's not on the click of group eight it's after it and not at the same time but we want a slam a slight whoops sorry we want a slight delay of one and a half seconds two seconds and i want it to be a take a little bit longer than half a second to fly in so i'm going to change 0 0.5 to one okay let's see what that looks like now so still those words are not there but now when i click on the crate it should appear And there it is. Okay, so I am going to complete this. I'm going to add in a few more animals and then I will come in to show you the finished effect. So I'm back and I have finished up all the slides. A couple of extra elements that I added in were these perspective shadows at the bottom of each box, which I thought made a nice addition. And that is just done by clicking on the picture, going to picture format, going to picture effects, going down to shadow, and then picking the shadow effect that you want. Um, and then the other thing I did was to add a transition to each slide so that when it's played as a slideshow, it looks like a book curling. And that is done by going to transitions for each slide and clicking on page curl. And now I will give you a quick demo of what it looks like. I hope you found that useful. Please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. I'd be very interested to hear how you are using PowerPoint to create interactive materials to use with your clients. I'm also posting regularly on Instagram. I post at least a couple times a week with lots of ideas for therapy. So I will put the, the link for that in the description box below. Until next time, see you again soon.